the Vactric R45 is very nearly done. Oh, it's a lovely little thing. But we still have a couple of tweaks to do and obviously to show you it in all of its vintage glory. So let's have a look at what is actually a very rare machine. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? This is a bit of a rare beast by all accounts. Well, I've had it a couple of weeks, obviously you won't see that in the video. And the only other one of these I've seen, Mr Mike King, posted up some library photos. He doesn't even own one and that's quite telling because somebody like Mike King, if anybody owns one it would be him. I don't think anybody else has one. Obviously, people know what they are. They are vintage, possibly 40s. But this is actually the only one in real life that I think many of us collectors have seen. And here it is now for you to see. It is so, so much better. It has not been painted. I've been umming and ahhing with a few other people, including the owner about whether we should get it blasted and powder coated because it has seen paint and it's not really apparent unless you look really really closely that it has been painted and that's why I've decided to not powder coat it because the problem with machines like this is that there's a very fine line between it being absolutely beautiful or ruining it completely. You can also tell because um, in the library photo there is the outline of the Vactric logo, which should be in gold detailing under here. I don't know, it's just, it's working, well, it's working now. It didn't work before, as you remember. I think we would just be taking the mickey. I think there'll be lots of more worthwhile to be powder coated machines coming than this. This is better off left alone. What I did do, though, was uncover this. It is, it's a shame about the damage. But, the original belt fitment guide, that was covered under lots and lots of dirt. So yes, it does work. I found a cable grommet, which although it doesn't look 100% vanked, is better than what was there before. Which I think is probably the key. That plugs in down there, so that's... Because you can take the handle off. In fact, you can take off really easily in the minute, because it is missing several clips. But... Again, it's one of those things where I don't know what was on. We'll come to that in a minute, actually, because we have something to do there. Ooh, what else is there while we're up at this angle? Well, the switch now works. Was gunked up. And I fixed that, as you saw, in the little extra video that I did. However, when I took it apart to do the refurb, it broke. It was so flipping crumbly that one of the terminals snapped off I tried to epoxy it could not do it however it turns out that Hoover must have bought the switch because I had a scrap Hooverette in the shed so what you are seeing is the little outline the switch exterior with the terminals is from Hoover it is the same physical switch the same cutout well, the same moulding for this exterior trim was there the rivets had the same thread so I opened it up in exactly the same way it's made of plastic not baker light so it didn't snap however it has the innards from the original Vactric switch. So that was a lucky save there. Well done Hoover, they must have bulk bought those switches from Arrow, who I imagine were the original manufacturer, and used them. So that was very, very good. All the wiring's been sorted out. There's heat shrink galore in there. I stripped out this, ex this cable, went all the way up to the top. I stripped it back a bit, because then I could push the thinner wires down the handles so they weren't all bunched up at the top. So that was very good. You may also notice that the bag is sitting a bit better. 
Uh, we can have a quick look at that now. I did again um and ah uh, about doing this, but in the end I had the bag off. It's just tied on with string. And I twisted it, not very much, so this was level with those, which are the tabs that hold on to them. I also managed to fold it back just a little bit more. In fact, you can see there is a hole in the bag that was on the outside. It's now on the inside. And it also lowered the bag a bit. I can't really do it anymore because it will start to encroach on there. So that's as much as I could do it. But this now sits properly. Now, I haven't found pictures of how the bag fits on. And obviously the last thing I want to do is try and break it. So, in terms of using it, it's not going to really help at all and it's still going to be a problem. But to display it, there is a little strong magnet. Mr Hooverlux gave me loads of these and that sits on there and all that does is just sit on the magnet. So when it's being displayed, yeah, that could do with being a little bit taller but there's not a lot I can do about that. But it just holds the bag there. As soon as you turn it on, it does that, which, again, you probably could cable tied on. And we might try that, but again, I don't know. I don't like doing things permanently. If it's not there, I don't like taking the mick. I'd rather do something really reversible, really temporary. This isn't going to get much use. It's going to sit there looking lovely. So it may as well sit there looking lovely, knowing that I haven't butchered it. And that is what we should do, right? Let's move down a bit. Oh, and if I get my ugly face out of the way, we shall look down a bit at this. Because if we flip it over, the base plate has been, it's had its rust removed, it's not been polished up, because I haven't. But the brush roll now has a hoover belt on it which I found to fit, it was a V1 commercial. I've also removed all the paint from the bumper, or mostly, there's a couple of little spots here and there, but this bumper had been painted the same colour as the handle, and looked awful. So I did that, I took all the paint off the wheels, I loosened, in fact we, we did get it off in the end, the adjustable knob for the wheels, in fact I'll take it off and show you it. Completely, hang on. Hang on. Ooh. Oh, come on. There we go. Unseize this, clean it all out. It's got a bit of grease on it, so it's a little bit sticky to hold. But there is the original Baker Lights, red Baker Lights adjustment knob. Yes. Very nice indeed. The rear wheels now spin. One was, in fact, you can see where it was, that because of the wear mark on the wheel, completely seized up. So we can fix that. Let's just put this back in. That just undid in the end. I was really surprised, because as you remember from the video, I was a bit worried that I was going to snap it. But it came free. Good soaking, penetrating fluid. Did the job. Oh, hang on, I can feel it. Touching. We'll have to adjust it in a minute when we use it. So basically, after a flipping good going over, it worked well. Which we'll get onto the motor sound in a second because one thing we have to do is something with this bag. Now, though it's not the original bag, because the original bag had a different font, it is a flipping good bag. Really, really good condition. It was black when I washed it, as you'll see in the refurb video. So because of that, we need to do something to stop it from getting dirty. So I bought, and I need these anyway, from our good friends at LM Electrical, some of ye old Thebo bags. And this offcut of hose from a pneumatic with the plastic bit left on and a little bit of tape to pack it out. What this does is sit in there and push it on enough 
again completely reversible you see and that's it in there and that still fits onto the machine like an absolute treat and what this allows us to do if I just pull the bag inside it here you can see my new string I was quite proud of that there's the hole for the there, there, there's the hole of the bag actually I should have this in the first place you can see where the, it was originally on so that's how much we've lost but we put that hole inside and with these you could just do that but that's going to look really really stupid with the bag on so we are going to have to find some scissors and we are going to cut the plastic top off it's a shame that the people that make these don't have, have never thought about making a batch without the plastic top I suppose that would cost so much money and tooling that it's probably not worth it these were so cheap it's actually for another project I've got I needed some SIBO bags and there we go we shall get ourselves a cable tie and we can HEPA flow this bad boy in fact this would possibly work for a 119, 375 any of the machines that take this you could possibly get away with it I haven't got any so I can't really say but there we go look that's on there so we can turn it back the right way around and you would never know it's little secret we'll put the bag slide back on fit it to the machine and there is one little caveat now as I noticed before it does sit there it's the only problem that little bit of hose is at the wrong angle again it's one of those annoying things that it's better to be like that than to not have it at all the other thing I haven't really worked out how to do is how to fix this handle bail on it is still just sat there this is the release pedal which sits there which is a little bit pointless because you do not actually need it at all it doesn't do a thing except sit there really so we're going to have to leave it on there because it came on but in the absence of any clips because again I don't want to go and drill a hole through it to fit a you know, split pin or something because that would just be a bit destructive whereas it should be hidden away enough that a good stout cable tie if I can just make it click just a little bit more should fit it on there enough there we go and if I can just push it on with these scissors it's I might leave that pedal off I might have to have a think about this off camera because it's not really important that pedal does nothing because all that holds this up is that bracket there that bracket there clips back and doesn't even knock it in it's just it just holds it up right and I think that looks better like that in fact this cable tie will possibly fit on better now without that pedal and I'll just leave that pedal in the box so to speak it can't really do the same on this side because it's got such a small little stub that there isn't much point so I think we're going to leave that for now because I'm only going to do it more damage than leaving out of this but it does mean that I can show you it in all of its running glory and run gloriously it now does now if you remember the video from outside on the driveway on that snowy day the snow's only just melted here that's only because it's raining it sounded awful And the reason it sounded awful was because the front bearing 
for the fan case was completely sea solid. Now I haven't been able to replace it because it is a very weird size bearing and I can find no markings on it to get a new one. So I didn't want to put it off and break it and obviously completely stuff the whole machine. So it has been very well oiled as opposed to anything else. So it runs, the rear bearing was fine because that's a sleeve bearing, that's got a little drop of silicon lube on it. And it now sounds a bit like this. It's so lovely, it's even brilliant and silent with its very warm brushes. It's doing its thing, sitting just off centre, sadly, so it is catching on that. But that was worn anyway. And obviously this, it sort of sits on there. And look, the cable time may not be getting off, but I'll let the owner decide for that. It is almost perfect. If we get rid of this deep hole carpet, which shows the grooming fantastically, and I'll just bear with me while I adjust it to this floor, because obviously there's no automatic adjustment, I've got to twist my knob. How nice this little thing is, and obviously now it works without you having to spend half an hour cleaning out this bag. But the other thing I was a little bit worried about was this belt spindle, because it is ever so slightly bent. But it's so thin that I didn't want to take the mickey by doing anything with it. seems to be okay really it's very good I like it a lot certainly probably never gonna see one of these again in fact let's put some dirt down and see how it does now I don't want to take the mickey with it because <laughs> A I don't want to get it filthy B let's be honest it's not gonna perform fantastic the brushes are very worn but we have a little bit of crushed up Cheerios here because it will snow plow like heck and let's see how it does no the agitation
that's a that's a four out of ten. Unfortunately, the belt isn't correct. It is slipping, sadly. But if you can find a belt from factory, I got the entire box of belts out, and that was the best one that fitted. The Kirby belt is too big. That is what we are dealing with here. And obviously, the belt it had was so tight it would have wrecked the brush roll bearings and the motor bearing, so obviously that went straight away. But it, 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 it did okay. It, it's more of a looker than a, you know, let's clean an entire house. And what a look of it is, even the bag stain fluffed out. So yeah, it's it's got its drawbacks, but the old girl works, which is more than it's probably done for a good, number of years it looks amazing it it does work you could use it you could demonstrate it as we have done here and basically it's done it is a nice little project i hope the owner will be very pleased with it we've still got the jacks back to do the time of filming this it is actually a part washed it just needs to be polished the metal work cleaned up and put back together but that could be in its own little video. I'm just going to erase the height of this as much as I can to stop that brush roll from being on the floor because it really isn't the best. It hasn't really got its A game on. It's okay. But this is more of a museum piece. This is a looker. Because just having it here is so, so rare. So, there we go really. The Factric Julia R45. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you soon. Bye bye!